So in just these 20 companies, we've got the biggest bets from ARK Invest, a super ETF representing almost half the assets managed by Kathy Wood and her team. The only question is, how will it do? Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with the Let's Talk Money channel. And Nation, you know I love ETF investing. Investing in a fund of stocks, there is no better way to make investing your money as stress-free as possible. But two things I don't like, the fees and the fact that there isn't one ETF with all my favorite stocks and themes. Now, the fees aren't usually that big of a deal. Most Vanguard ETFs charge less than a quarter of a percent annually, which works out to be just $25 on every 10,000 invested. Even the higher fees on the popular ARK Invest funds are less than 1% a year. But there is still that problem that you have to buy several funds to get all the stocks or the themes that you want. There's no super ETF that has all your dividend stocks, your growth stocks from different industries, and all the strategies that you want in one fund. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create one. In this video, I'll explain exchange traded funds, show you the pros and cons of ETFs. Then using a new tool online, I'll reveal how to create your own super ETF using the ARK Invest funds as an example. I've added chapters to the video if you want to skip over the basic stuff on ETF, straight to creating your own all-in-one fund. I'll be using the new ETF feature on StockCard with some great details into ETF investing, breaking down different ways to look at funds and giving you the insight into the best stocks in each. I'll leave a link to StockCard in the video description below. Click through and then go to Portfolios in the top menu. You'll find the Bowtie Nation portfolio in the Stock Picks section. It's free to follow and you'll get email notifications whenever I buy or sell from the portfolio. As a special bonus, I've negotiated an exclusive discount for everyone out there in the community. Use the promo code Bowtie Nation, all one word in lowercase, for an exclusive discount beyond the free trial. Now, exchange traded funds are just groups of stocks around a theme or an investing strategy with a portfolio manager that either picks the stocks or rebalances them around a set of rules. So you get index funds that just follow a group of stocks like the S&P 500. Anytime a stock is added to that index, the portfolio manager adds it to the Spider S&P 500 ETF, the SBY. Another example here, the dividend aristocrats are those stocks that have grown their payouts for at least 25 consecutive years. So, so anytime a company is added or falls from the list on that rule, it's added or sold from the ProShares Dividend Aristocrats ETF, ticker NOBL. Now, other ETFs give their managers more decision-making in what's added, like in this iShares Multi-Asset Income ETF, ticker IYLD. The manager can add stocks, bonds, even alternative investments to produce that 4% dividend yield. So pros of ETFs are you get that one stop for that investing strategy, whether it's dividends, growth stocks, bonds, whatever you're looking for, there's an ETF for it. You buy one stock that gives you exposure to hundreds, even thousands of individual investments, immediately diversifying your money across the theme. Now for that layer of management, the fund charges an annual fee, which is usually from about a tenth of a percent or higher, and this money comes out of the fund's assets regularly, so you won't actually see it taken out of your account, but it does decrease the value of the fund and your investment. And besides this drawback, there are two other disadvantages to ETF investing. One, like we saw earlier, there's no one super fund, no single fund that's gonna give you all the strategies like dividends, growth, and safety. Also though, most funds have too many stocks to really produce that highest return possible. Portfolio managers are investing in hundreds and thousands of stocks rather than just their top five or 10 ideas. That means even the runaway performance in a few stocks is going to be limited by the so-so performance by the hundreds of others, and, and the overall return, usually not that great. For example, the ARK Invest ETFs run by Kathy Wood and her team offer some great ideas into disruptive technology, but there are six funds here, each one focused on a specific topic and, and with 50 or more stocks in each. Now, there's some overlap between the funds, but it's still hundreds of stocks and hugely different convictions, with some stocks like, like the $3.2 billion investment in Tesla across several funds, all the way to less than $30,000 in shares of Snowflake. In fact, ARK holds more in shares of the top 16 companies in those funds than it does in the remaining 157 stocks. That's over $21 billion held in just 16 stocks, versus an average of just 133 million in each of the rest of the portfolio. These are all companies that could change the world over the next 10 years, but the portfolio managers just so obviously don't feel the same level of confidence across all of them. What I wanna do, I'm gonna take this information, use it to find those highest conviction plays across the six ETFs to build that one super ARC fund on StockCard. Using the stock picks section, we'll be able to track how this fund does against the S&P 500 
and ARC itself. Here we can start by typing in the name of the ETF here in the search bar, and it's gonna populate with all the ETFs that we wanna look at. Looking at the ARC FinTech Innovation ETF, ticker ARKF, we see here all the key information, including expense ratio, returns, and the top 25 stocks in the portfolio. The fund invests in companies driving that revolution in financial technologies, including blockchain, transaction innovations, and funding platforms. There's some great information here, but I wanna scroll down to the top 25 holdings. It shows me the company, its market cap, and the weight of that stock in the fund. Here we see Square Inc. Ticker SQ is nearly 11% of this fund, and we know that Square touches a lot of those innovative fintech ideas like, like the blockchain, digital wallets, and transactions. So this fund has $3.6 billion in assets, and almost 11% of that in Square alone, for an investment of $388 million in the payment platform. But if we scroll down all the way down to the bottom, we see that it only has about 1.4% in Zongang Online PNC Insurance, or, or an investment of about 49 million. And that's not even the smallest investment in this fund. We see here in StockCard only the top 25 investments of the 52 in the fund, and, and already we see a huge difference in conviction. And Kathy Wood is betting almost eight times more on Square as she is on Zongang. So I wanna take that bet on Square and drop the side bet on the Chinese insurance company. We'll also scroll back up to the top and look at the next two or three stocks. Now I like Shopify more as an e-commerce play, but I guess that qualifies as FinTech and it's over 6% of the fund, so we'll add that to our list as well. Real estate is hot this year and Zillow has come down from its peak, so we'll add that one to the list. And while I do like to invest directly in cryptocurrencies instead of on the platform, I think the Coinbase here can do really well. So that's four of the five largest investments in the fund. Just those four stocks alone make up 27% of the total assets, or an investment of $992 million of that total $3.6 billion in fund assets. And we're gonna do the same thing with all six of those funds. Pull out the highest conviction stocks in each one to create our super ETF with all the best stocks. Now, if you do wanna see all the stocks in a fund, you can always go directly to the homepage and every ETF is gonna show you its holdings. We can go here to the ARK Invest website and to that FinTech fund. We'll scroll down to the holdings and click on View All. And looking at the remaining 20 stocks in this fund, we really aren't missing much. In fact, the last 10 of these don't even make up 1% of the entire fund. Now, some of these, it's kind of questionable also their importance in FinTech. I mean, the fund has money in the South African RAND, the currency of South Africa, and Etsy, which is an okay company, but I would put that more in traditional e-commerce than fintech innovation. Anyway, the point is, with this super ETF, we want to farm the very best of the ARK funds, the biggest investments, and the companies most likely to change the world. Now onto that ARK Innovation Fund, ticker ARKK, the flagship fund with almost $22 billion in assets across 51 companies. This fund produced a 164% return last year, and while it has come down this year, it could be the best time to buy because these are still the most innovative and disruptive companies on the list. Scrolling down to the top holdings, we first see Tesla here for more than 10.5% of the fund or an investment of $2.3 billion just in this fund. Now, a lot of Kathy Wood's thesis on Tesla is not only that dominance in electric vehicles, which is expected to benefit from a 20-fold increase in EV sales to 2025, but also its ride-sharing future with autonomous vehicles, a market that could be worth $3.8 trillion over the next few years. And while it's had problems lately with that system, Tesla is closer than anyone else in developing that level five autonomous driving that, that could enable this robo-taxi business. The fund holds more than $1.2 billion in shares of Teladoc, ticker TDOC, and while this stock is down 54% from its peak, I like it for a long-term investment. Teladoc is the global leader in virtual healthcare with a provider network that covers 70 million US patients and a billion member data points from traditional telehealth to remote monitoring and the next generation of primary care. Membership has grown 40% annually since 2016 and 10.6 million patient visits last year. The company's revenue doubled last year and 80% of that is from recurring services. So I like the stability even if that growth in telehealth slows from last year's faster pace. Long-term telehealth and virtual care is the future, but I think data is really the undiscovered value here, processing all that patient data for analysis and research. I'm gonna piss off a lot of people here and skip over Roku. Now, the streaming platform is popular with a lot of investors, but I think it's still overvalued, and with reopening, streaming stocks may not do that well over the rest of the year, so we're gonna skip it from here. Hey, 
in your portfolio, feel free to go wild. Next on the list though is Coinbase. And this is something you see a lot in these ARK ETFs, that duplication where a company is in several of these funds. But, but since we already added this one, we'll move on to Unity Software, ticker U, the $35 billion leader in creating and operating interactive 3D content for game developers, as well as business applications in automotive, construction, and film. I really like Unity because it's not just in that virtual gaming space, but helping companies design applications in every sector. It's benefiting from that shift in virtual worlds. The company reported 53% revenue growth last quarter, representing three consecutive quarters of increasing sales growth and 2.5 billion in monthly active users. And with that previous edition of Coinbase and these other three stocks, we have what amounts to 25% of the ARK Innovation Fund holdings. So just in these four stocks, nearly 5.6 billion of the $22 billion fund. Next here, we see the ARC Q, investing in companies driving that revolution in autonomous technology and robotics, holding 44 stocks for total assets of $2.72 billion. And scrolling down, we see the top 25 stocks, and Tesla is the first one here with 11.7% of the fund. So big shocker, but we've already got that one. Trimble, ticker TRMB, is a $24 billion leader in instruments and controls that helps companies manage processes and productivity by analyzing their geospatial and other data. Kratos Defense and Security, ticker KTOS, is one I recommended late last year, and we'll see it again when we look at the ARC Space ETF. The company has its hands in a lot of the disruptive technologies, from unmanned drone systems to space management, defense, and microwave devices. The company's satellite and space segment already supports 90% of US space missions and hundreds of commercials and government satellite missions. We've already got Unity Software, but we'll add UiPath, ticker PATH, and Iridium Communications, ticker IRDM, to the list as well. Now, these four stocks, plus the two that we already added from the other funds, makes up 42% of the autonomous and robotics ETF. Just six stocks is nearly half of the entire fund of 44 companies. So far, after reviewing three of the six ARK ETFs, we've added 11 stocks to our super ETF list. ARK holds $14.3 billion in shares of just these 11 stocks, more than 33% of all assets managed at the firm. Next here is one of the most disruptive of the funds, the ARK Next Generation Internet ETF, ticker ARKW, with 48 stocks and $5.8 billion across cloud computing, e-commerce, artificial intelligence, really the biggest disruptive trends that we're seeing right now. And surprise, 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 Tesla is the top holding with 10% of the fund. And if you recognize that reference, you're my kind of people. Anyway, the fund also holds $332 million in shares of the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, ticker GBTC. And again, while I prefer to invest directly in Bitcoin and Ethereum, there's a discount on the shares right now versus the value. So I think this is a good investment ahead of maybe an eventual conversion of the trust into a true ETF. And this next one though, Twitter. Now I know there's a love affair going on between Jack Dorsey and Kathy Wood because they both love Bitcoin so much, but but Twitter, a next generation internet play, I'm just not buying it. And we've already added the next five stocks here from other ARK funds. So we'll add Twilio, ticker TWLO, and DraftKings, ticker DKNG, to our list. This next ETF, the ARK Genomic Revolution, or ARKG, has been hit hard this year, down 26% from its peak. But for those investors willing to wait for the discoveries, this could be one to watch. The fund holds shares of 65 companies within biotech and information technology disrupting the healthcare space for nearly 8.3 billion in assets. And this is also where we see the least overlap among the funds. Other than the top holding Teladoc, which is 6.7% of the fund, we don't see a lot of these other stocks in those other ARK ETFs. So it's a great place to add some of those unique bets. From here, I'll add Exact Sciences, ticker EXAS, Pacific Biosciences, ticker PACB, and Vertex Pharmaceuticals, ticker VRTX. ARK holds more than $1.7 billion in just these four stocks for 21% of the total fund assets. The newest ARK ETF, the ARK Space Exploration and Innovation ETF, ticker ARKX, is by far the smallest, with just $596 million in assets across 41 companies in that space race and satellite communications. And when the fund was launched, yes, that is a space pun because I'm funny like that. But when the fund was launched, there was a lot of pushback on how the connection between the space theme and a lot of these stocks was really kind of weak. You've got some solid companies here, but I've yet to talk to anyone that can explain to me how Amazon, Netflix, and, and John Deere are involved in that space exploration. So we're only gonna be adding three from the list. Shares of the 3D printing ETF, ticker PRNT, L3 Harris Technologies, ticker LHX, 
and a drone maker Aerovironment, ticker AVAV. So in just these 20 companies, we've got the biggest bets from ARK Invest. In fact, just these 20 stocks represents 44% of all assets managed across the six ARK ETFs, an investment of more than 18.9 billion in these disruptive companies. The big question is, how is it gonna do? Click on the video to the right for the five stocks with the potential to become the next Apple, five small cap companies with room to grow. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.